kudos and congratulations to everyone that, that stepped up and entered and, and put something out there to be tested in front of the world. I'm not sure if a bunch of you guys followed the little LS3 camshaft challenge or not. It's a pretty cool deal. And I wanted to not only go over the results of the camshaft challenge, but, but explain my methodology of what I chose for the camshaft to be entered into this competition. This Weingartner, Eric Weingartner's uh, camshaft challenge, I had stumbled across a post on Facebook, I don't know, a few months ago or something like that. Eric basically had offered a challenge up to basically put up or shut up. You know, I thought it was a good challenge to try to come up with and challenge myself because for those of you that don't know, this was a carbureted engine, a carbureted LS engine. So this isn't something that I am completely native to, native to the LS engine, but I don't do a ton of carbureted stuff, you know, not carbureted LS stuff. The test engine was a 408 LS, four inch stroke, 430 bore, uh, very, very common short block, you know, a very standard short block you know this thing was like 11.3 to 1 11.3 or 11 half to 1 somewhere around in there he provided us with the cylinder head information as far as um port sizes cross sections flow numbers valve spring data um valve size and the induction consisted of a an edelbrock uh, victor jr intake manifold and a 4150 carburetor now, the little bit of carbureted stuff I do, I typically am doing with 4500 Dominator stuff and stuff that wants to go a little bit more RPM, you know, that may have a Super Vic or may have um, like a CID uh, single plane on it. So this was a little bit, um, I, it was a little questionable for me. I had to look this manifold up. You know, it has like four different runner lengths. You know, the center runners are essentially about four inches long and the corner runners are around six inches. They vary a little bit, I believe, from the research I did. So that was a, a little bit of a wild card for me in in what I was going to do with this camshaft because a lot of it was based around the induction package and the compression. The other huge factor was the way he's grading and the way this test was done. So you wanted to have the best overall camshaft across the board in regards to peak torque, peak horsepower, average torque, and average horsepower. Over, this is our test RPM range, 4,000 to 7,000 RPMs. I'm thinking, well, that's a, that's a pretty broad RPM curve. You know, and I don't know exactly where this induction is going to want to go. So I don't want to get too carried away with the cam. But at the same time, I don't want to be too small and uh, make good torque and average torque numbers under the curve, but give up a lot of peak up top. So there's where the balance came in of, you know, what do I need to do for this camshaft? The way he was going to grade was we had 23 contestants. So the highest peak horsepower would be one you got a point for one but if you had the fifth highest peak torque you would get a five and then you know essentially the same thing for average horsepower and average torque over that rpm range so the objective was to have the least amount of points at the end of the day when the dust settled and honestly a lot of the camshafts were really close but it was interesting to see how the varying lobe designs and uh, overall profiles of the camshafts would be close in some areas, but there would be larger gaps in some areas. So uh, my method of thinking, you know, I always, when I tell people about how, what do I do for camshafts? And they're like, well, what do you do for duration? What do you do for lobe separation? I'm like, those numbers are spit out at the end for me. What I look at, the very first thing I look at is when I want the intake valve to close. So that's going to be determined by <clears throat> my RPM curve, my static compression, how much you know cylinder pressure do I have to work with, the later you close the intake valve, the more it's going to bleed off some of that compression. The earlier you, you close it, the more peak cylinder pressure it's going to have, but it's going to hinder your RPM range. So there's a balance of closing the valve early, closing the valve later, to find the happy medium between under the curve torque and being able to carry the power out up top some. Um, and a lot of that's relative to the compression ratio of the engine and also the stroke of the engine. So 
normally I would be taking stuff out 7,000 plus and I would probably be uh, low 50s, mid 50s on intake close. But because I knew the test was going to get cut at 7,000 RPMs, I said, well, we run a lot of plastic manifold stuff. Even though I don't run a lot of this Victor Jr. stuff or very little of it, if any at all, we run a lot of plastic manifold stuff that's longer runners that's in this RPM range, 4,000 to 7,000. And on stock stroke stuff, 48 close, 48 IVC, is usually pretty good at this compression range. Now I said, but I've got a four inch stroke, so that's gonna wanna make it peak a little sooner. However, we have a little shorter runner induction package versus like a, your normal EFI plastic manifold, which is gonna make it wanna carry out further. So, like I said, I was late getting to the game to even get into this test. Our camshaft was one of the last ones to get there. It actually got hung up in the hurricane at Cam Motion, and thankfully Eric was gracious to let me have a few days grace time for it to get there in time for the deadline to be entered. <clears throat> but I just decided I didn't have a lot of time to, to sit and spend a few days on this. I said, well, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with like a 48 close. Um, ish, somewhere around in there. My camshaft ended up being uh, 247, 263 on a, uh, I did it on a pretty tight LSA because I wanted to pack some overlap in this thing to try to make some power under the curve and, you know, be able to carry some power out up top also with some exhaust valve closing. Um, but yeah, I was 109 lobe step and I was uh, 105 intake center line. Um, so I was 48 and a half intake close, which is very similar to what like our SS4 would be. <clears throat> My next step on valve event that I look at personally, every single time that I do a camshaft, I look at intake valve close first, then I look at exhaust valve opening. So the EVO, <clears throat> I was 64 and a half degrees, which again, is pretty common for what we would do even on stock cube stuff. But the stock cube stuff, generally I'm taking out a little further RPM than, um, uh, than 7,000, and I wanted this thing to peak in the mid 6,000s, but hold on to the power pretty good to 7,000 because I wanted this under the curve. I wanted an overall average good camshaft. I didn't want to hit the, I wasn't focused on hitting <clears throat> the peak number to have the best peak torque or best peak horsepower. I wanted overall average. So I settled on a 64 and a half IV, or excuse me, EVO on the exhaust valve opening. And um, I thought that would let my power carry out good up top and, uh, and work well for me. <clears throat> then my last two valve events that I wanted to figure were basically um, my overlap. So when the intake valve starts to open and when the exhaust valve closing point is. And I determined I'm going to split these. I'm going to be pretty aggressive with overlap. So I did 18 and a half degrees on each one. My actual cam, when it was ground, you know, usually the lobes come out within like a degree, half a degree, somewhere around in there. My actual cam was a little bit different <clears throat> than what my original spec was, but that's okay. And, you know, one degree here or there is not really going to make a, a drastic difference. But, uh, yeah, so I ended up with 37 degrees of overlap. My actual cam ended up at 19 and a half IVO on the intake open, but it ended up at 17.7 on the exhaust valve close where I was trying to be 18 and a half, you know, closer to 19. <clears throat> and that's what I went with. So day one of testing, uh, there was a Texas Speed cam in the car or in the engine um, that he just used as a control cam to essentially set up the test Dial in the engine, dial in, make sure jetting was good, um, find optimal ignition timing, and to make sure it was repeatable and everything was good to go before he started running the uh, competition cams. And uh, uh, the Texas Speed Cam made, uh, I don't have the control cam numbers on here. They were in a text, dang it. I want to say it was like 640 horsepower or something and whatever it was on torque. But anyways, it wasn't in the contest, um, but it was used as a control cam to dial the engine in. <clears throat> there had been a drawing randomly to select the running order of the camshafts. And 
um, our camshaft was the very first one drawn. So we were the very first test camshaft ran, uh, which I was nervous about and also happy about kind of at the same time. Uh, just mixed emotions about being the first one to go, but it is what it is. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> so he ran our cam and our cam uh, did 660.1 horsepower and uh, peak torque was 559.3. Now, the way he was doing the testing was no timing changes, no jetting changes, only the camshafts were being changed. And to control the test and make them very, very accurate, um, he made sure the oil temp and the engine uh, coolant temp, water temp, was basically the same or as absolutely close as possible for each pull for each camshaft. Each camshaft probably got two or three pulls, two pulls probably mostly on average. Uh, he did 23 cams in three days, which is a feat in its own. He put in a lot of work and he did all the things to make sure that this test was absolutely valid and not skewed in any way whatsoever. So kudos again to him for putting this thing together and actually pulling it off. But yeah, we were 660.1, 559.3. Through the first day, five cams were tested. We were still number one. Um, and then we were number one probably halfway into day two testing or, or a little ways into day two testing. And then Mr. Joe Carroll's camshaft beat us in three categories. He beat us in peak torque, average torque, and average horsepower, but he, he only made 647.9 horsepower. But at the time, with the scoring is that being the next top cam uh, that put him ahead of us in overall points, uh, the way it was scored. But I was thinking in my head, well, there's a lot of camshafts to go, and if a number of people make him between his 647.9 and our 660.1, there's an opportunity for us to still be able to squeak ahead if there's a lot of peak horsepower numbers in that range. But the other metrics don't get skewed too much or we don't get beat on too many other categories and testing continued to go on go on go on and eventually that's what ended up happening um was our camshaft just overall ended up being pretty good across the board it wasn't the best in any category but it was good so my peak horsepower was number five the fifth best out of all of them peak Torque was the third best peak torque. There may be a, a couple of these we were tied with somebody on. Our average horsepower, we were third on average horsepower. We were third on average torque. So we were just right there at the top with every, all four metrics. Bobby from Cam Motion slash NK Performance, he, uh, he won the thing overall. He really, assisted. In a, in a field of very close metrics, when you look at these dyno sheets, if you were just to look at peaks, they're very close. They're all very close. But really, his camshaft was um, was just better than everybody's, you know. And um, it was really a, a, a great overall test, honestly. It was really great to learn and look at the different camshafts and how these little small changes influenced the power curve on that particular setup. And any time that there is a, a, an LS or a Gen 5 LT camshaft challenge or anything like this or cylinder head, camshaft, top end induction. If there's a challenge like this, I'm more than happy to get in and enter our stuff in there um, and compete against any of the best that want, to, uh, that want to compete in this. That's what drives the competition and drives innovation is, uh, is doing these types of tests right here. And there couldn't be a more valid um, test than this for camshaft stuff. I only wish it was EFI because, and I'm being selfish because that's most of the things that I deal with is EFI. I don't really deal with carbureted stuff, but I honestly didn't treat this much different than I would have an EFI setup, to be honest with you. And if I did have a little bit more carb experience, maybe I would have changed some things up a little bit and maybe it would have made it a little bit more competitive between uh, us and NK. We finished second, so I'm I'm happy overall. I, I don't even know if I've mentioned that yet, but um, we finished second overall. NK Performance, Bobby at Cam Motion was number one. 
Uh, Mr. Joe Carroll was number three. It was a great learning experience and just happy to be, I was happy to be in the ring uh, battling it out in a very, very friendly competition. There was no animosity between any of the competitors that I saw whatsoever, which was amazing for compared to the kind of shit that we're used to in the LS world. Um, it was just really fun. 